If you're designing a reinforced concrete structure, I'm willing to bet that one of the questions you answer most often is how much steel do I put in that beam? Welcome back everyone, I'm Professor H, and in this video we're going to talk about how much steel to include in a reinforced concrete beam to carry the flexural demands. So we'll start off by talking about two different methods, and then we'll employ those methods in an example calc on a simply supported beam. Let's first look at the general steps that we'll follow when we're designing a reinforced concrete beam. Now, the first step is always to get your dimensions and material properties. So things like span length are often going to be controlled by your column spacing and placement and generally your building layout, but depth and width of the beam, you have a decent amount of control over. We're going to talk about that in a separate video. For now, let's assume that those are given. We'll also need to look at our moment demands, and if you have dimensions and loads, that's not too tricky of a process. So let's assume that we also have that as well. What we're gonna focus on in this video is estimating our area of steel for our cross section, given those demands. And then we're gonna go ahead and check our capacity for that section. In a design situation, you would also check your serviceability to make sure that you meet your deflection limits. For right now, we'll put that off also for a future video. Now there are two methods that we can use to estimate an area of steel that we need for this beam. And the first method that we're going to talk about is what I call the ballpark guess. And this is gonna get a number somewhere in the right ballpark, but it's not going to be exact, but it's somewhere to start. So let's say my cross section has a height H here and a width of B, and the depth to my steel is going to be distance D. Now my objective, of course, is to ensure that my capacity is greater than my demand. So my capacity is going to be given by phi mn, phi is our strength reduction factor, mn the nominal moment capacity, and our demand, which is the ultimate demand, is m sub u. Now the first thing that we need is a strength reduction factor. We're always going to assume that this is 0.9, and that's a strength reduction factor for a section that is tension controlled. Now the concrete code, if you have a beam that has low axial force, requires you to have a tension controlled section. So it makes sense that we would assume 0.9 for this design, even if we don't know any better yet. Next, we need to find a moment capacity. So our moment capacity MN is equal to the tension force, which is area of steel times the yielding of that steel, multiplied by the moment arm between my tension and compression forces. That moment arm is D minus A over two, where A is the depth of my compression block right here. And so our moment arm is going from the center of our compression block down to our steel. Now for the ballpark method, we're gonna have to make a few assumptions. So AS, that's what I wanna find, but D minus A over two, we don't actually know what that is. So we're going to make some assumptions. Uh, first, I'm going to assume that my depth of my compression block is equal to D divided by four. So it's roughly a quarter of my section is going to be in compression up here. And then furthermore, I need to assume some depth D. So we're going to assume that the depth D to my steel is the height of my beam, typically minus 2.5 inches. So where did that 2.5 come from? If I look at the bottom of my section, I'm going to need to include cover. And the cover is typically about one and a half inches for most reinforced concrete beams. I'm also going to include a stirrup around there. And oftentimes we're going to use number three stirrups, which has a diameter of three eighths of an inch. And then I also need to include my bar radius. And if we're, if for example, using a number 10 bar, which is a little large for a beam, but not unreasonable, that's going to have a radius of five eighths of an inch. And adding that together gives you two and a half inches. Now, if you're expecting to add more layers of steel, so if I have a second layer of steel here, then you're probably going to want to add one inch to that. So then you'd say about three and a half inches instead of about two and a half inches. But again, this is just a ballpark, so we're getting a rough number to start off with. Now, if you make those two assumptions, you substitute this expression in for MN and you solve for your area of steel, you will find that the area of steel has to be greater than MU divided by your fee factor, divided by FY multiplied by 0 0.875 times D. And this expression is going to get you a pretty decent estimate of how much steel you need in that beam. Now, what if you want something a little bit more exact, 
let's look at that second method to get a little bit better answer. And that is known as the stress ratio guess. This is gonna be a little bit more involved as well. So once again, my main objective is to ensure that my capacity is greater than my demand. And I'm still gonna go ahead and assume my strength reduction factor is 0.9. Now I'm gonna flip the capacity equation a little bit around. So instead of looking at the tension force multiplied by a moment arm, I can look at the compression force multiplied by a moment arm and it gets me the same answer. So that compression force is 0.85 F prime C times AB. So again, AB is going to be the area of my compression block right here. And the stress in that block in compression is 0.85 times my concrete strength. I'm gonna have the same moment arm as before, that's D minus A over two. But now you'll notice I can substitute this expression into MN here, and then I can go ahead and solve for A. So I can solve for A, and then knowing A, I can substitute that into a second expression that gives me an area of steel. So my area of steel has to be greater than 0.85 F prime C, a times B, that's just my compression force, and divided by Fy. And this expression is essentially coming from the balance of my tension and compression forces. Those have to be the same in my section to satisfy equilibrium. Now this expression is often presented in a couple different ways, and we can go through the solution process, but a lot of times you'll have some canned equation that you can use. And my favorite version of this canned equation is the reinforcement ratio version of this equation. So if we're looking at the reinforcement ratio that's given by rho, we can find a rho required, and it's going to be equal to one divided by m multiplied by the quantity one minus the square root of one minus two M R N over F Y. So obvious question is what are M and R N and F Y is our yield stress. So we know what that thing is. M is known as the stress ratio. It is our yield stress F Y divided by our concrete stress, which is 0 0.85 F prime C. And R N is known as our stress demand. And it's given by the moment M U divided by phi b d squared. So if you know your material properties and you know your demands and cross section, you can then find a required reinforcement ratio. And that can be easily turned into an AS area of steel just by multiplying your reinforcement ratio by B times D. So this canned expression is again, my favorite version of using this method. It will get obviously the same answer as solving a quadratic equation by hand, but it's a little bit more straightforward. Now it's time to dive into our design example, but before we do that, if you found that this content is useful and educational, please hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And it will help others find this video too, so they can learn more about their concrete design as well. So thank you for hitting that like button. And now let's proceed to that example. All right, so what do we have? We have a simply supported beam 30 feet in length with a dead load and live load of 0.8 and one kip per foot respectively. We have some normal weight concrete with 5,000 PSI and just grade 60 steel. And I would like to determine my necessary amount of steel and then go ahead and check my capacity to ensure that it meets my proper demands. So first things first, we have to find those demands. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate our factored moment demand. And so our factored load W is going to be 1.2 times the dead load plus 1.6 times the live load. So plugging in those numbers, 1.2 times my dead load of 0.8 kips per foot plus 1.6 times my live load, which is one kip per foot. And taking that together, this is 2.56 kips per foot. What I'm really interested in is my moment demand MU. So for this simply supported beam, the moment diagram is just a parabola and we'll be designing for my peak moment here at the middle, which is WU L squared over eight. So those are all known quantities. So let's go ahead and plug that in. I have 2.56 kips per foot for my load. Span length is 30 feet and I square that and I divide this by eight. And we'll find that this is a moment of 288 kip feet. And I want to convert that into kip inches. So we'll multiply this by 12 inches per foot. And therefore we have a moment demand of three, four, five, six kip inches. 
So that's the demand that I'm going to carry with this beam. So let's start off with making some assumptions. And the two primary assumptions that I'm going to make are my fee factor, which I'm going to say is 0.9. And then I need also a depth to my steel, which I'm going to say is H minus two and a half inches. So I'm going to try to place my steel in a single layer. So my H is 24 inches. So this is a simple 21.5 inches for depth D. Next, you really should check your minimum area of steel. This is prescribed in ACI 318 at 961. You're always gonna need to meet it, so just make sure that our steel is greater than some minimum limit for crack control. This expression is the maximum of two different numbers, three times root F prime C divided by Fy times BWD, or 200 PSI divided by Fy times BWD. BW is your web width. Now, because we're dealing with a rectangular beam, the web width is just the same as the width overall. So that is 14 inches. Plugging that in, it's going to be the maximum of two different numbers, 1.06 square inches or 1.0 square inches on the nose. And so the maximum of those two is 1.06 square inches. So regardless of what my design looks like, I need to have at least that much steel. Now we'll begin with our ballpark guess just to get me in the right area. So here my ballpark guess, my area of steel has to be greater than or equal to MU, my moment demand divided by my strength reduction factor, all that divided by FY multiplied by 0 0.875 D. So plugging in my numbers, my demand is three, four, five, six kip inches divided by 0 0.9 is the fee factor. And then my yield is 60 KSI. And here I have 0 0.875 times my depth, 21.5 inches. So running those numbers, this is 3.4 inches squared. So that's my ballpark number. And that's a decent amount of steel. So let's try to get a little bit better estimate. I could actually just proceed with this number if I wanted to, but I always like checking both of these just to kind of make sure. Our second estimate is going to use this stress ratio guess. So I'm going to plug in first my stress ratio M, which is Fy divided by 0 0.85 F prime C. Fy, our yield is 60 KSI. Our concrete strength is 5,000 PSI, so that's 5 KSI. And this expression is, is 14.12 for that stress ratio, that's unitless because we have KSI over KSI, of course. Also need my stress demand, Rn. This is going to be my moment demand, Mu, divided by phi Bd squared. And that expression is going to be equal to 3, 4, 5, 6 kip inches, divided by 0 0.9, multiplied by my width B, 14 inches, and my depth D, which is 21.5 inches to the steel. And square that. And this is 0 0.593 KSI. The next step in this process is to find my required reinforcement ratio. And this is given by one over M multiplied by one minus the square root of one minus two M R N divided by my yield F Y. So we have all those numbers, so let's just plug it in. This is going to be one over 14.12 multiplied by one minus square root of one minus two times 14.12. That multiplied by 0 0.593 KSI divided by 60 KSI, close my square root. And evaluating that, we find that this is a reinforcement ratio of 0 0.0107. Now we can take that reinforcement ratio and turn it into an area of steel. The area of steel is just the reinforcement ratio times B times D. So that is 0 0.0107 multiplied by 14 inches and D is 21.5 inches. And this area of steel is slightly less than my ballpark number, 3.22 inches squared. Now this approximation is going to be slightly better than my ballpark number. So if I wanted to just use this number going forward, I would be well justified in doing so. And that is our next step is finding out how much steel I should include and choosing what size of bars to use. To help me with how many bars and what size of bars to use, I have a couple of useful tables here. Check the description for the links to these tables and a few more. 
So let's zoom in on that table one, which gives me a total bar area by size and number of bars. I need to include some area of steel that's exceeding 3.22 or 3.4, depending on which approximation I'm using. So I see a couple good options here. So I see I can use eight number six bars, six number seven bars, or five number eight bars. All those seem pretty reasonable. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our table here to see what width of beam I need to fit those bars in a single layer. So I had eight number sixes, I had six number sevens, and then I had five number eights. We can see for the eight number sixes and also for the six number sevens, my beam is only 14 inches wide, so these bars would not fit in a single layer. I could put them in two layers, and that might be kind of cool for the eight bars. I could have two layers of four, for example, which definitely fits. Two layers of four would work great for that. But I want to put all my steel in a single layer, so let's use five number eights. So to summarize that, I'm going to use five number eight bars and that has an area of steel equal to 3.95 inches squared. So that's gonna be my design. So let's go ahead and check that, see if it works out. So now that I have an area of steel, I can go ahead and lay out my bars. Here are my five number eight bars on the bottom, and now I can get an exact number for my depth D to that steel, which is 24 inches, and then I have to subtract my cover, 1.5 inches, I'm gonna use a number three stirrup, so I'm gonna subtract another three eighth inches off that. And then the radius of a number eight bar is half an inch. So that gets me precisely to 21.625 inches for depth D. Now the capacity works just as it always does. So first step is to find my depth of my compression block A, which is ASFY divided by 0.85F prime C times B. So plugging in my numbers for that, my area of steel is 3.95 inches squared. Fy is 60 KSI. And then I'm going to divide this by 0.85 times my concrete strength of 5 KSI. And my width is 14 inches. And therefore I find that my depth of my compression block is 3.98 inches. I can also get a depth of my neutral axis C, which is just A over beta one. Because I'm dealing with 5 KSI concrete, beta 1 is equal to 0 0.8, and therefore I can evaluate this as 3.98 inches divided by 0 0.8, which is 4.98 inches. Next, I want to check my strain in my steel layer to make sure that I'm actually tension controlled. So that strain in the steel layer is given by epsilon T is 0 0.003. That is your concrete compressive strain. And using similar triangles, you can get the steel strain by D over C minus one. So plugging in our numbers for that, it's 0 0.003 multiplied by D, which is 21.625 inches. And my depth of neutral axis is 4.98 inches, all that minus one. And this is evaluated to be about 0 0.01, so 1% strain. I'm gonna compare that to yield, so epsilon T minus my yielding strain for steel. Steel of grade 60 is going to yield at 0 0.002 strain, so this difference is 0 0.008. And because that is greater than 0 0.003, I do have a tension controlled section. So awesome, V factor is in fact 0.9, so I have satisfied that assumption. Now I can find my capacity. So my capacity, MN, is the tension force, ASFY, multiplied by the moment arm, which is D minus A over two. So calculating this out, ASFY, so AS is 3.95 square inches, and then my yield is 60 KSI. And the moment arm, depth D is 21.625 inches, minus my compression block, 3.98 inches over two. And calculating that all out gives me 4,653 kip inches. Now that's our nominal moment capacity. If we want our design capacity, that's our strength reduction phi multiplied by mn, and phi is 0.9, so this is equal to 4,190 kip inches. 
And I can see that that, in fact, does exceed my demand. So my demand all the way back at the beginning of this problem was 3,456 kip inches. So I've exceeded that pretty handily with a decent margin. So that means I might be able to go back and iterate, reduce my amount of steel, or maybe even reduce my section because I have exceeded my capacity by a decent margin. And that is how you calculate the required area of steel in a reinforced concrete beam. So as always, I hope you learned something. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.